My name is Peter Jessen. I'm a saxophone restorer and maker. I'm situated in Copenhagen in Denmark. I'll walk you through how I restore a dented 1927 soprano saxophone. This saxophone is totally out of working order. It's badly dented. It's bent. I'll have to take it all apart and a lot of it is rusted together. A lot of dent has to be taken out. In order to make a good job on a saxophone like this, you have to take everything apart. Every part has to come off because you can't really work on bodywork with the whole keywork on it. And with the keywork rusted, everything has to be addressed. So you strip it completely, take all keywork off. For the disassembly, I use standard tools as screwdrivers, uh, pliers, a little Bunsen burner to heat up and oils. The springs on old instruments are often useless. They have lost all their flexibility and strength. So they have to be clipped off or pushed out or both. And sometimes it can be really taxing because they also are subject to rusting. In order to get a perfect functioning instrument, you have to replace all the springs to get it really nice. Here I am uh, removing the thumb hook, which is what supports your right hand when you carry the saxophone and you play it. This is a small hook that's soldered onto the tube for support, and as it sticks out, it is often the one that gets dented into the instrument. The hook itself is quite thick and hard, and you have to remove it to get to the tube to get the dent out properly. I have different tapered mandrel parts that I can put on a threaded rod so they will fit the exact spot inside the bore of the instrument and I can push out the dents with that and make a pretty good result rather than using a ball or something not accurate. This is a very good method of getting the dents out precisely. The problem with the instrument and dents is very much where they are and how big they are because a lot of players play on fairly dented instruments with no problem. If they're underneath post that support mechanism, you get problems. Particularly on a small instrument like a soprano saxophone, it is essential because the tubing is very narrow and you can't afford much discrepancy for the airflow. Certain areas of the instrument I can't get to with the tapered mandrel parts. I have to use a dent ball and I measure up the dent ball to fit inside the tube where the dent is. I slid it in. And after that, I slid on the next ball dent and I can use that as a hammer by swinging the instrument up and down. So I push the first dent ball through where the dent is and remove it that way. Here I'm using a hand roller burnisher to smooth the surface because after the dent balls there will be slight ripples on the surface and you can remove that and also round the instruments. If it's got a few high points you can lower them. The critical thing about dent work is that you cannot expand the bore of the instrument which is an easy thing if you slam on with a hammer or you push too hard with a dent tool or something because expansion of the body tube will disturb the bore which is essential for tuning which will affect your playing and the instrument's playability. This saxophone is very old, it's been lying around probably for decades and silver plate will tarnish with age. So it's very, very dull, grey, black looking and it's such a nice silver finish underneath so the effort of polishing will make an instrument that's beautiful. On bigger instruments you might use a polishing machine. I could use one on this but it's nicer to get into the detail with hand polishing. The keys have to be uh, polished. I put them in a, the rag in a vise and polish it from there and get into the corners of every part of the key as far as you can. After polishing 
things will turn up that you didn't notice when the horn was uh, dirty and tarnished and you see slight ripples because the polishing surface will reflect the light much more and here I'm smoothing out little imperfections uh, with a hammer. Here I use a hand roller burnisher again against a steel sickle that is fitted to the table surface. This sickle will fit the rim of the bell and I can roll out the dents on the bell rim. After straightening up the dent underneath the thumb hook, I fit the hook and I paste it on the underside with a paste, which is keeping the soft salt of flux, which keeps the area clean and helps the salt to flow once I apply the heat. After soldering with the thumb hook on, there will be some tiny excess solder on the sides, which I remove with a polishing knife. After finding the pad that fits the right key, I preliminary fit it to the key and once I'm happy with the fit, I heat up some shellac and stick it onto the pad in order to put it back under the key, fit it again and then heat it into place. With the shellac as a binder, the pad will stay in place and it will be a nice seal. Once all the keys are fitted, you start by putting it together. And there's a progression in how you do this. You start with the right hand's mechanism and you work your way through the instrument. And it sort of follows logically what comes first and what comes last. Restoring a saxophone like this is long and arduous, but at the end, it's very satisfying to make life anew for a saxophone line from 1927.